Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tea time. Ah, I forgot the whoosh. Whoosh. We have a patch incoming. The patch might have disruptor stuff, ghost stuff, minimap improvements, which are really finally going to be here for real. Uh, turret tracking for siege tanks and immortals. Awesome. Addressing the issue of large number of air units difficult to micro. I really, really, really hope that that is the separation radius problem that is within the engine that requires recoding that they were talking about earlier. I think that's the thing. I hope says that, that oh, if that's the thing, the oracles moving about in twos and threes and sevens will be beautiful and wonderful and all non Protoss players will hate them. Map diversity. So this is kind of just covered in the last tea time. Pretty much it's sort of yes in terms of things. It's fun. It's different. It's great. It's wonderful. Don't freak out too much. It's going to be a-okay. Example being, there's a PVZ Zerg all in on Bridgehead and people are like, oh no, it cannot be stopped. And then people found a way to stop it. The same thing, Bly figured out this really cool way to deal with the gold float on Dash and Terminal. Oh no, it can't be stopped. Fun, someone's going to figure out a way to stop it. It's really easy to jump to conclusions after the map's getting played for a week or less. And it's like, ah, such and such a thing is broken. You persevere, guys, you know, get in there, get in there, mix it up, find creative solutions to problems. That's the exciting thing. That's the awesome thing about new maps. It's sort of like, whoa, I found this broken thing. Oh, I figured out the way to beat the broken thing. Oh, cool. Great. You know, it's there's a lot of room for exploration and growth and the solving of problems within new and interesting maps. So get in there and find the solutions you can. The Cyclone, they're bringing out the range, but not the damage. They're actually lowering the damage. So last time we talked about maybe the damage and the range too much at once. Blizzard agrees. Cool, cool. So they bring out the range. I still feel like there might be a bit too much rain. The fact that the lock-on is now broken if vision is lost is great. Uh, again, something we talked about before. And it's sort of this really cool counterplay kind of a thing. You can engage near a ramp or the edge. You know, it's, it's sort of like a an extra calculation you have to make when you're controlling a cyclone and when you're playing against a cyclone. Uh, you get a little bit more defender's advantage if you have that high ground to work with against the cyclone. Different things like that. So it's kind of cool. And the damage is getting a not buff. It's not a buff, it's an upgrade, so it's kind of like a buff. So initially it'll have lower damage, and later on it will have similar damage in the air and stronger damage on the ground. I don't really know the, why those particular specifics, but I'm, I'm sort of just interested to see how it ends up working out. I'm really excited that they're messing with the Cyclone a bit to make it more interesting. Especially, the highlight for me is that lock-on uh, being broken as vision is lost because it expands counterplay, makes more micro, micro situations, makes more decision-making happen, makes more tactical play. Ooh, very nice. Medivac upgrade. It is a bit much, isn't it? All right, I'm glad. All right, we said, hey... Blizzard guys, this whole medevac thing is kind of crazy. And then Blizzard's like, we tested it internally and we did find out it was indeed crazy, so we won't be doing it. So they're going to maybe, their, their current idea, so this is not something that's coming out soon, but it's sort of something they'll be internally testing, it seems like. Their main idea is going to be to change the upgrade to increase the speed boost duration. They're trying to buff the drop play without making the main engagements too strong. And they're looking at changes for the medevac for that. Um, there is something that I'd like to address here that is this very slight thing that maybe wouldn't make significant enough of a difference, but it would make a pretty large difference uh, um, in the way of the, the, they're looking more like right? this is not going to affect main engagements but it will affect the drop play and make more droppable scenarios happening so there's this situation that happens i'm not going to call it a bug because it could be intentional i don't really know if you have units in a control group they enter into a medevac they disappear from that control group when you unload them they reappear in that control group however if you mess with that control group in any way, either adding or creating the control group, those units will be removed from the control group. So, kind of, right? Um, it makes things a little bit more difficult to control, especially Nidus, it makes Nidus pretty tricky. So changing this mechanic within the game where if you add something to a control group, it removes things, instead of that, right? You just have it so 
I make a control group. Right, this is the way. This is the way that Maru uses his drops, right? And Maru is a very you know micro intensive human, so he will have two control groups, and he'll just have this is my army and all my medevacs, and he'll pick it up and he'll go do his drop. But adding anything to that control group while anything is in the drop is a problem, which is why he has to, when he's moving out with his second control group, make a totally fresh control group to do that and just keep cycling through these two control groups. That's kind of the way that he does it. And the reason for this is that if you can have the units in the control group that are in the medevacs, as well as the medevacs themselves, you can move faster, you can pick up faster, you can get out faster. It's just, it's a, it creates more fast place paced drop play because more things are possible that weren't possible before. So if you make it so that you can um, select everything in a medevac whenever you select a medevac, it opens up this really cool mechanical uh, setup where you can have your whole army, load up a medevac, shift click it out of the control group, create control group, bam. Now you've got your new control group. And then create control group or add to control group, bam, you have your drop control group. Super fast, super clean. It's the same way that Zerglings and Banelings get split into their two opposing control groups so you can control them individually. It's the same thing. The only reason Terrans can't do that is because of this weird thing where you can add, you're adding to a control group, but it removes things from a control group, which is counterintuitive, and it sort of takes away from the potential for this really, really cool uh, drop style play. Carrier interceptor behavior improvement. Now, Lalush made a really, really cool, succinct, very well organized post about the carrier, comparing the Brood War carrier and the cool things you could do with it and why you could do cool things with it to the Wings of Liberty carrier and why it sucked and why you couldn't do cool things with it. And there were three things, there were three major differences that made the Brood War carrier a microable, interesting, skill-demanding unit to control and that made the Wings of Liberty, as such, this A-move unit that was uninteresting. The first one was that you could, with the Brood War carrier, change targets midstream. So you could be attacking one thing, and then if you clicked something right on the side of it, the interceptors would go, and they would go and attack that thing right away. They wouldn't have to return to the carrier and then go back and attack again. That's actually how the return to the carrier go back and attack again. That's how the Wings of Liberty carrier worked. Um, Blizzard realized that this wasn't quite as good with the help of uh, Noni, or Liquid Tyler, uh, as he was, as he was called, depending on who you who you want to say, or Nuni, perhaps. Yeah. In any case, that first thing got fixed in Heart of the Swarm. Excellent. The second thing was, if the interceptors are on the way back to the carrier and you want to attack again, you could do that, and the interceptors would turn in the air and go back. Currently, carriers will not do that. Once the once the interceptors start coming back into the carrier, there's nothing to stop them. You basically just have to deal with it. And that was the second thing. The thing that they're talking about here is the second thing. And they're saying, okay, cool. We can make the interceptors more responsive. There is a third thing. And it was very clearly brought up that were th that were three there were three distinct things that were different about the carrier. And it's a little bit frustrating that they completely ignored the third thing. And that is that in Brood War, if you keep your carrier moving, the interceptors don't go back into the carrier. What that means is that if you spend the time to keep microring your carriers and keep moving them around, you're re rewarded by an instant deploy of all of the interceptors instead of a one out of out of you know one at a time out of the carriers as they go along which i think is really cool and interesting and maybe blizzard thinks it's not really cool and interesting but why not talk about it why if there are only three things one which is already solved two which you're addressing would you leave out the third thing so my question to you david kim and company is First of all, why'd you leave out the third thing? Second of all, what do you think about the third thing?
My name is Jack Attack, and as always, thanks for watching. If you have an idea you would like me to make into a video, please leave it with any questions, comments, criticisms, concerns, or anything beginning with the letter C in the comment section below, and I'll see you again soon. I don't think a musical thing is going to work if I do the music thing. <laughs> fuck it, I don't have time to fuck around with this bullshit. No music. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, actually, the volume's not going to be quite right, is it? Hello, lady. Mmm, yes. Mmm, yes. Now, um, Lelush made a really, really succinct... succinct my name is Jack Attack, and as always, thanks for watching. If you have an idea that you would like me to turn into a video, please leave it in. Wow. Got a little off there, huh? Wow. My name is Jack Attack, and as always, the tea is a lie. The tea is a lie.